Hello everyone, it's MZ. Welcome to my channel. In today's vlog, I will be bringing you along with me to the night safari. And before that, let's eat.
Moving on to the rocky outcrop to the right, we have the Mako, king of all mountain goats. Adult male Makos have impressive spiral ship horns. Makos are endangered due to relentless poaching for the ornamental value of their horns. It is the demand for animal parts like these that pushes many species toward extinction. Remember, you buy, they die. We leave the foothills behind and wade through the marsh. You can miss our striking greater flamingos. Flamingos feed without ever looking at the food. With their head upside down, they take in mouthfuls of water and strain tiny organisms from the water using their specialized beaks. Take a deep breath, everyone. Got a whiff of that? That musky scent is the unmistakable smell of our Asian small clod found in a wildlife preserve in the Gear Forest Sanctuary. They currently exist in the wild only as a small single population. A single event like a large forest fire could cause them to be extinct. Here at Night Safari, we are proud to have successfully bred our lions as part of a global effort to sustain the population of these species under human care. Found in the hot, dry grasslands and forests of South Asia and the Indian subcontinent, the sloth bear is not related to the sloth. Europeans call it a sloth bear because it has long curved claws that sometimes hangs upside down on a tree branch, very much like a tree sloth. Up next, the second largest land animal in Asia, the greater one-horned rhinoceros. Also known as the Indian rhino, it can weigh over three tons. Observe the bumpy texture of the animal's skin and its distinct folds, giving it a segmented armor-plated look. While it may look tough, rhino skin is, in fact, very sensitive. Rhinos do not sweat, like you and I, which is why they are often found near the bodies. Wallowing in the mud helps them keep cool. With only 200 individuals left in the wild at the start of the 20th century, Indian rhinos were close to extinction. Now, the population stands at 3,500. Rhinos have poor eyesight. They rely mostly on their sense of smell to navigate and communicate. 
Feces and urine are used to mark their territory. Sniff the air. You might catch a whiff of this or the scent of other creatures of the night. Keep your eyes peeled. Denizens of the nocturnal world magically melt away in the background as if under a cloak of invisibility. Over to your right, everyone. Try spotting the spotted hyenas. Predators like these will always remain concealed until the right moment. Spotted hyenas are not just scavengers, but formidable hunters too. They produce a variety of calls that communicate hierarchy, advertise territory, or together the family. These social animals form groups called clans. Over to our left, we have three deer species grazing in the shadows. They are thumbing, the hog deer, and barking deer. Males spot antlers which are used to spar with other males for meats. They shed their antlers after each mating season. If you peer down the left, you'll be able to catch sight of the Cape Buffaloes grazing. The safari tour is complete without a walk through the forest on well-marked, easy-to-follow trails. Other elusive nocturnal animals such as the Malayan tiger, pangolin and babirusa can only be seen on foot. You may want to explore the leopard trail, east lodge trail, wallaby trail and the fishing. Two worlds, one of sunlight, the other moonlight, blends into one. Animals like the white raccoon searches for the last piece of food before heading home to rest.
digging in his dexterous paws, he searches for his favorites. Insects, worms, snails, and even fried eggs. But not white raccoons. They're all dark. And once satisfied, he'll return to his home in the trees to curl up for the night. Daytime animals settle down to sleep. The forest comes to life. Hidden amongst the shadows, nocturnal animals emerge from the dark silhouettes of the forest. With the body stripe to provide perfect camouflage, a fishing cat appears along the riverbank. These cats love to swim and dive underwater, and they wear a layer of short hair so thin that even water can't get through. It is this layer that will keep them warm and dry, even in chilly waters. Fishing cats are rapidly disappearing due to habitat loss and poaching. It is of our protection for this quiet hunter disappears forever. Good evening once again and welcome to the world of the night hunters. Now I've often been asked how the nocturnal animals survive. Well, all night creatures have unique adaptations for survival in the forest. For example, the bitter rocks. Now jet black and color, they are almost invisible at night. With their excellent eyesight and powerful sense of smell, he searches for his food. Now most of the things that they eat in the wild will be fish, fruits and smaller mammals. Now a big throat in the wild could live up to 20 years, which is relatively long for such a small mammal. Now everybody meet Aslan, our Binturong. And while he is here, he'll be showing us another reading adaptation of the Binturongs. This would be his long, powerful, and prehensile tails, which enables them to climb onto trees and hang from branches effortlessly. Now these tails are incredibly strong and can withstand their entire body weight which in Aslan's case is around 15 kilograms. Oh, wow. And if you happen to visit the Binsura exhibit later in the night safari, you may come across a particular scent. Some people say they smell like pandan leaf, but to me they smell more like planted popcorn. And as he makes his way back, just look at the way he walks. See Binsurongs, they are also known as the Asian bad cats due to their short stubby legs and bear like walk. So let's say goodbye to Aslan, our Binsurong. And while civets like the Binturongs rely on their keen sense of smell for survival. Other nocturnal animals rely on their acute hearing powers. I'm talking about the owls. Coming up from my right side with our trainer Liana is Oscar. Now Oscar here is a Eurasian eagle owl and like their name suggests they can be found in some parts of Europe as well as some parts of Asia. Now believe me or not, they are also the largest species of owls that you can find in the entire world. Now focus your attention over to the left staircase coming down with our trainer Sheena is Bulan. Now Bulan here is a Malay fish owl, also known as a Buffy fish owl. Now they can be found in regions such as Malaysia, Indonesia, and they're most commonly found right here in Singapore. Now how many of you believe me when I say that owls are one of the quietest raptors when it comes to their flight? Let's get a show of hands. Oh, we have not that many believers tonight. Well. Bulan here is going to show you just how silent they can be when they fly. And for that, I need everyone to remain seated down, keep your flashes switched off, and most importantly, remain quiet. Alright Bulan, whenever you're ready. Let's give round of applause to Bulan for such a wonderful flight. Did you hear any noise coming from the wings? What about the beak? No? You sure you didn't hear any noise coming from the beak? I think she was making Yes, this is because Bulan here is a very talkative owl. Yeah. See, owls, they can glide silently over fields and meadows to search for their prey. Because most of the things that they hunt for in the wild would be rodents. And rodents have an excellent sense of hearing. 
so an owl has to be really silent in order to catch their prey. Seems like he really loves the spotlight well. Another interesting fact about the owls is that their ears are set asymmetrical, which means one ear is set higher than the other. This enables them to listen to different ranges of sounds and tones coming from their surroundings. Wow. And it also enables them to triangulate the exact location of their prey, even in total darkness. One last fly back to the glove? No, it's okay. It's okay. Well, remember when I told you this is the Malay fish owl? Yes, they might have fish in the name, but they actually hate getting wet. So in the wild, they'll swoop down, they'll catch their fish, only their feet will enter the water, and they'll finish up their meal on some dry land. And with that wonderful fly back to the glove, let's give round of applause to Bolan, the Malay fish owl, along with our trainer, Sheena. Now I have not forgotten about our beautiful trainer and owl. They'll be staying back to show us another unique adaptation of the owls, which would be the rotation of their heads. So I'm going to set this perch out here real quick. Now while Oscar gets comfortable on the perch, I'm going to ask every single one of you a question. So it is relatively known that owls can rotate their heads. But to how many degrees? Just shout out your answers. We got three single on this side. 360, we got 700. 700. Are you sure? <laughs> Up on the side. We got 270, we got 360. Well, if you said 360 degrees, give us a round of applause. Yeah, because we can try harder next time. Oh, well, no, the correct answer 100. is indeed 270 degrees. Oh, 200. And the reason why owls can do this is because they are unable to move their eyeballs up or down or left to right which is why they can rotate their head a full 270 degrees to take a good look at their surroundings. Now enough of me talking, I'm going to let Oscar show you exactly how it's done. Take it away. A full 270 degrees, but Diana, don't you think that was a little bit too quick? Would you guys like to see that one more time? Yeah. All right, one more time for us, Oscar. Full 270 degrees, very impressive and just a little bit creepy. <laughs> so the reason why owls can do this is because they're very long and flexible necks. Unlike us humans, we have seven neck going race. Owls here, they have an impressive 14. And remember when I told you this is the largest species of owls that you can find in the entire world. Well, their wingspan can stretch up to six feet in length, which is taller than our trainer Liana over here. And with that, Let's give a round of applause to Oscar, the Eurasian Eagle Owl, and our trainer, Liana. Now, creatures of the night, they come in all shapes and sizes, and look at Oscar just showing off his magnificent wingspan. I think he's trying to get away. <laughs> I want to go on tree. As I was saying, creatures of the night, they come in all shapes and sizes. And for our next animal, I will not tell you what it is, but I'll give you all some clues. Are you ready? Yeah. Alright, clue number one. This animal is very small. Right. Could be a fish. Clue, could be a mouse. Clue number two. This animal is native to the Sahara Desert. Could be a camel. Could be a snake. <laughs> well, this is your final clue. This animal has really Large ears. Now while you all are guessing, I'm gonna step aside and call him out. Foxtrot! Everybody meet Foxtrot, our Fennec Fox for tonight. Oh, now Fennec wow. Foxes, they are native to the Sahara Desert. And they are able to live vertically and horizontally from 1 meters to 1.2 meters in length. In the desert, they use their sharp and curved claws to dig for their food, looking for things such as small insects, small mammals, and even scorpions. Remember when I told you that they have really large ears? Well, this helps them listen up for prey or predators sneaking around from behind them, and it also helps to get rid of excess heat when out in the hot Sahara sun. That's what I need. 
bigger so, ear. <laughs> <laughs> That's our solution. Can we show us one way to the jump? Right? And look at that, it's so cute. Very this is your last shot with the focus on for sure. And I'm off like you go back over the trainer, can't be. Yeah. Endangered yeah. species. And just like the server we saw earlier, they're all fighting a losing battle in the wild. <laughs> How do you get here? Who, who is this? Oh, it's Sophie, everyone, you all saw him at the start earlier. I guess while he's here, he'll be showing us his unique adaptation, which would be his dexterous paws. Now with these dexterous paws, they are able to open up the lids of these containers, topple bins and open up the doors to our homes. And in case you missed that, he'll be moving on to an upgraded version right over there. And look at how easily he does it. Now many people mistaken Toffee for an albino raccoon, but for all of those who got a good look at his eyes, Toffee actually has brown eyes, but an albino raccoon would actually have red eyes. And with that, he has already left the stage. That was very fast. Let's say goodbye to Toffee, everyone! How quiet raccoon! Now, unfortunately, raccoons, they are considered as pests in many different countries, and this is not entirely their fault. See, our towns and cities have come too close to their natural habitat, and together with the ever-diminishing forests, they're forced to come to our world to feed and to survive. And it makes me wonder what caught this attention in the bin just now. So, in the bin, we have some common everyday items you see being littered around the night safari. And there are many different things that we can do to stop this, which is by recycling. And with that, our journey through the night has come to an end. But let's not forget the lessons we learned tonight. See, from the owls in the sky to the bins room on the branch, they all want to remind us to protect their cousins in the wild as well as the fragile environments that they call home. What we do makes a difference and we must decide what kind of difference we want to make. Because the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it for us. And with that, my name is Akil. On my right, we have Sheena along with Rainbow. The Great Horn Owl. On my left, we have Candy along with Pola. The Malay Fish Owl. Up there, we have Pazli for sounds and lights. Thank you everybody for coming to the Creatures of the Night Show. Stay safe and good night. Bye bye.